Hi everybody, welcome to another Como Live. It's another special Como Live. If you have are an avid viewer of Como Live, you probably remember me. I'm the one who told you about the conservatory opening. Well, guess what? I'm back and I'm here to talk about the zoo opening. So we're very excited to welcome people back to the zoo as well as the conservatory. The conservatory will still remain open while we open up the zoo, but it does look different from what you're used to. If the last time you were here was during our normal times where you could come whenever you wanted. Uh, it's a little bit different now. We do have a one-way path and we also do require these lovely face masks to, to come in, but um, we'll talk more about what you might see and the different things that you can visit while you're here. The one thing to note, you may not even recognize where we are. So we are doing a different opening of where you come into the zoo. And that is here, which is near the carousel. Uh, the palm lot is one of our main parking lot areas that you may be familiar with. And uh, this is a, a newer area for us. It's called Cleveland Court. It uh, opened last year. It's just another kind of gathering space. If you're here in July, you might have saw a huge tent. Uh, that was back last year when we had Sunset Affair out here, which is our partner, Como Friends, their big fundraiser for the year. We just did a virtual Sunset Affair this year and it went very well, but uh, very different this year. And uh, so this is where we're going to be entering. When you come in, you're going to see a, a nice large little area where we're going to have staff here to check your reservation. So that goes, make sure you have a reservation before you come. We do have to limit the number of people who are coming in at any given time. So walk-ups are likely not going to be available because I think a lot of people are going to make their reservations in advance. So please make sure that you do make your reservations before showing up here to the park. And you can do that by going to our website and it's free. You just have to fill it out and uh, it's very easy, but you just have to make sure you do that before you show up because again, we can't guarantee that there's going to be walk-up availability. So once you get in here, we'll get you headed into the zoo. I'm going to go for a walk with you today. Kind of like what I did with the conservatory. I'm going to share some random facts of whatever stuff I come up with on the way. So in, we can enjoy our little walk today. So let's head inside. And today, because I'm doing the tour, I'm not wearing my face mask, but normal times and even up until this, I was wearing it and I might throw it on once in a while in some of the areas that we go into. So come on in. As soon as we walk through the gate, we already hit our first choose your own adventure part of our, our visit. You have the option of going into pollinators, which if you've been here before, sometimes it's been butterflies, sometimes it's been an edible garden. This year we have pollinators back again, which is bees and all of the fabulous things that bees do for us. We're going to go check that out. And uh, so let's follow me. Okay, so we are in the pollinator exhibit. So as I mentioned, this is really gearing more towards bees. Now, whenever I would mention to people that, oh, we got the pollinator exhibit, they'd go, oh, you don't have the butterflies. No, not this time, but it's pollinators. So it is talking about some of the butterflies and it talks about bees. And then people also go, I'm not gonna go into a tent full of bees. Um, rightfully, I can understand that. Uh, they're not free flowing. It's not like when the butterflies would land on you. You're probably not gonna have a bee land on you here. It's safe, it's okay. They are in contained areas as you'll see as we walk through, but it's a great spot to take some time and check out the different pollinator plants that we have growing in here. They're stunning. And it's a, a lot of ideas that you can do at your own home to help our pollinators because they are so important in our anything we do. So. Make sure to protect those pollinators. This exhibit is a rotating exhibit. It is funded through the Legacy Amendment, and which actually Como Live is also funded through the Legacy Amendment. Uh, it's a great program that we are super thankful for here at Como because then we can do fun things like this. We can make this a rotating exhibit and use those funds to help educate people on different pollinators or in the case when it was edible gardens 
and uh, and just like with Como Life, we can share our knowledge, and uh, and it takes the burden of stress of being able to staff it and um, and make sure that we can do that. All right, now we're going to be making our way to primates. As you can see, we've got this nice little barricade here that's keeping us into a one-way path. So at this point, we're going to immediately turn here from the pollinators area and head towards primates. And you'll see some of the outdoor exhibits you'll be able to see on your way back. So don't worry if the orangutans are outside, you'll still be able to see them. So you don't need to pause here. You can check them out on the way back back through the zoo. Right. And just because the uh, primates are a little more susceptible to COVID, I am going to wear a mask while we're in here just to be safe. Just in case. As we get to this point, we have our lower level of our primate building blocked off. That's to keep everybody on this side. So it's a little bit further from, from the glass areas on this area. It again, just maintains that one way. If you were to go down there, if you had a stroller, you wouldn't be able to get back up on the other side. So that's why we've got it blocked off. So it's a one way we keep you up here. And we got the paddis. One of the things that I love about them, the male one here, he, uh, he's a big fan of mirrors. So often for his birthday or special occasions, he'll get a gift of a mirror because he likes to use it to look behind him, look at himself. So I've often walked in and saw them with a mirror in their hand, checking out things behind them. This is our family troop side. And uh, so you'll see some of them, they're all kind of hanging out up above there. Uh, the youngest is Nayadi, uh, and there's also Arlene is also one of our younger ones. You see Schroeder, who's checking us out, saying, who are you? Haven't seen you in a while. But uh, you'll see Eni over here is kind of foraging in. The keepers will place different things and before they go out onto exhibit here to, so that they can find little snacks throughout the day and just get them moving around their exhibit a little bit more and oh, yeah. hello yeah. awesome all right let's keep heading this direction we're going to go visit our hoofstock animals next and make our way on our one-way path still So the type of kudu we have here are lesser kudu. I got to go to the Indianapolis Zoo a few years ago and check that out and they had greater kudu and the size difference between our lesser kudu and the greater kudu, it's amazing. They're a very cool animal and uh, I highly recommend checking them out. Look up pictures online. All right, let's go see our giraffe next. As we're walking, we're gonna keep heading this direction. We're making our way again on the one-way path. And so we'll be making our way to the giraffe feeding area, which the giraffe feeding station won't be open this year. And uh, at least to my knowledge, as we film this, it could change. But my, my guess is with COVID, we won't be doing that this year, hopefully next year. But uh, in this area, you'll be able to see all of our giraffe. We also, have a male zebra in this area and two ostrich, which are olive and pickles. All right, now we're gonna make our way towards the cat bridge. So you'll see that we bypass the wolf woods area. We don't have wolves currently. Our last wolf passed away of old age basically in the last within the last year uh, we are looking to hi ostrich just scared me 
and uh, so that area is closed off so if you've ever driven by you might see that there's an empty exhibit there so once we go here you've got the option we're gonna go up to the upper cat bridge so we're gonna be able to see our cats from up above here so we do ask that you don't hang a right we go straight ahead So when we're up here on the cat bridge, on, if you're walking up, it's going to be on your left hand side. This is the cougar area. So that's uh, where we have two cougars, a male and a female. They, uh, they were orphaned in California, two separate litters. So they're, they're close to the same age, but they're not quite. Ruby and Jasper. So zoos do not breed cougars in, in captivity because there's so many that get abandoned as, as babies that need to find homes because they're unreleasable for whatever reason. So they never have a breeding recommendation. You probably, if you watch Como Live a lot, you hear breeding recommendation and species survival plans and uh, they don't put them on that breeding recommendation list because of how many get abandoned and are unreleasable in the wild so we're very fortunate to have these two here they might be hiding out down below um, we can take a look and see if we can find them sometimes they hear voices and pop up oh he's in the water hi hello <laughs> Hi guys. What's the plan here? In here we've got Arctic Fox. Uh, they're pretty cool. In the winter time they're brilliant white and now they're brown so they hide in with their surroundings really well. So of course they, as their name suggests, they are Arctic animals so you would find them far far north, uh, Alaska, Canada, and so in the winter they're white when the landscape is white and then once it starts to get more spring summer time they turn brown so that way they just blend in with their surroundings really well it's a nice little adaptation they've got there now we see our reindeer are coming around the corner Coming to say hi? <laughs> For sure. They are currently in shedding mode, it looks like. As you'll see, we do have the lower cat bridge blocked off, so we will not have that open. Just maintains a little bit more of a distance between us and the cats, as uh, we've learned from the Bronx Zoo that they did have one of their cats contracted COVID probably from contact near contact with their keepers so we're being extra cautious even though we get a little close up there it's still far enough away that uh, we're hoping that that keeps them safe and especially with us wearing face masks while we're there which i put on when i'm not doing a como live that uh, will hopefully as from what we know hopefully helps to keep them safe so that's why this area is closed off and you get to see everybody up above on the upper cap bridge so it just maintains that one-way path as well so let's go check out the doll sheep and keep making our way past the hooved animals. So we got our doll sheep. We've done a few Como lives on these guys because they are adorable. It's been a while since you've seen them. So if you see the two smaller ones, those are the little babies we saw earlier this spring. They are growing so fast. And they're all going inside now. <laughs> they're like, hey, you're talking about us. We're going to go inside. So there's restrooms access right here. It's our polar bear area restroom. So that is going to be open and available for you should you need it. 
a good spot to break. This building here is also called the Polar Bear Lodge. Often I see people walk up and try and open those doors. It's actually just a meeting space. Uh, it's a meeting space that you can rent if you wanted to do a small meeting here or uh, it's a great spot for a super small wedding reception or just a small gathering of a social gathering of folks but otherwise it's closed it is just a meeting space not very exciting now here's your test is it buffalo or is it bison let's see if you know these guys are bison so we often call them buffalo here I don't really know why we call them buffalo, but it's they are bison, they're American bison. So you'd see these guys, you see them out in South Dakota if you go all that direction. We do have some herds in Minnesota as well. And so the uh, there's bison and then there's buffalo. Buffalo live in Asia, Africa, and then these guys, which are the American bison, they live here, but we all call them buffalo for some reason, but they are actually bison. All right, now we're gonna go check out the polar bears, see what those two boys are up to. So again, this is a one-way path that's gonna take you right into polar bear odyssey. And then we'll make our way out the other side. So we are in Polar Bear Odyssey, and we're checking out on our Neil and Buzz, our twin polar bears. So this is an area you'll be able to walk into, kind of go through. This is our shallow side pool, and so you can see him taking a, a little dip here. Sometimes, I always notice in the summertime, you'll see little pink tips on top of the ears of the polar bears. They uh, sometimes will put fly ointment if they see that the flies are bugging them and the flies are really bad, especially like later in August when they are really bad. So you might see little pink tips on their, their ears. We're not dyeing their hair just to make them look cool. We're, we're helping to protect them from some of those really irritating flies that annoy all of us. But he's, he's found a good spot to hang out today. So we're going to head into aquatics right now. Aquatics is really under a lot of transformational change. We're making some changes in here and so you'll see some of it. It'll look different when you're here because right now it's a little messy, but uh, <laughs> you get an idea. We're opening this space wide up, um, but in the meantime, you'll be able to still see the puffins, the penguins when they're on exhibit, which they are doing some tank cleaning today. Um, Something you might notice is the theater area that used to have a little step down way back before the new Polar Bear Odyssey exhibit opened. This was a viewing window for the polar bears and then it just became just a theater space where it just had like an ongoing movie. Well, that is no longer. It is all one level and there'll be a special surprise coming at a later date for that space. And so this will be a looped area. You'll go in through here, check out the sea lions as they're hanging out in their pool before they move into their new home in Como Harbor. But they still hang out in here and enjoy seeing people. Hello. Hi. Yes, I'm gonna show off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> now we're back up to is it buffalo or is it bison see if you can test your knowledge that's right it's bison that's what we learned earlier today so you can annoy your friends like i annoy my friends by constantly correcting them when they inappropriately use the term buffalo in place of bison friends love that so now we're headed to pier 56 which is kind of our new food service area here at como harbor so this will be open while you're here on your visit to have a quick snack break or a lunch break in the meantime we're having some different activities happening some painting happening on the side of the building 
So we're sprucing it up so it looks good for you guys when you return. So I suppose we could talk about Como Harbor since you get to overlook Como Harbor here. As you can see, a lot of work is getting done in this space, and um, but it's not open yet. But when will it open? That's always the question. It's an excellent question. We don't quite know yet. <laughs> so until construction is completely done, we don't know. And also we wanna make sure that we are having a big celebration for this exhibit once it does open. And that may mean having to wait a little bit longer than we hoped. So when we know when we can open it up, we will. Um, regardless, as soon as all of the construction is done, the animals will need time to acclimate to the space so that they feel comfortable in the new, their new environment. So it will take a while before we're able to open. It's taking some time, but we're taking time to make sure it's done right. You can see from here, there's a nice little area here that'll have some tables, some chairs. So that'll be a great spot for seating to overlook the pools. Underneath this space is a viewing area, so you can underwater view the seals and sea lions that will be in the habitat. And then that probably looks somewhat familiar to you if you're a Sparky fan. There is a nice new amphitheater that will be open for viewing of the future Sparky shows. And uh, from what I'm hearing, there should be shade. So that'll be a nice inclusion that we didn't have in our previous Sparky amphitheater. From here, there is restrooms here, our new Como Harbor restrooms, but we're gonna make our way directly over to Gorillas. So we're gonna take a shortcut. So that'll be a new fun way to traverse the zoo. So gorillas, I think, are an interesting one to talk about, um, kind of why zoos exist. Because I know a lot of people are, they think, I know I was concerned before I started working here, you know, what if I start working there and I see that the animals aren't cared for? And I was very concerned about that because I am an animal lover myself. and. Um, I will say I was amazed at the care and the concern that the keeper staff and management and everyone here has for animals and plants. And uh, I think it really shows with our, our gorillas and um, what they do to keep them happy and healthy. Uh, zoos, there's, it's a double-edged sword a little bit. There's some really great zoos out there and there's some that are maybe maybe not as great. Uh, one thing to keep in mind that as we are, we are accredited by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, as is the Minnesota Zoo and Lake Superior Zoo, we're very fortunate in this Minnesota to have three accredited institutions. Not to say the other ones are bad, but it really is, you have to go through a lot to be accredited and that really shows a level of care and, uh, and transparency that uh, that we have that uh, maybe some others might not but it doesn't again mean that they're a bad place to be but um, zoos in general exist because it's pretty much human nature to need to have a connection with an animal and to be able to want to do something to save them in the wild so like this guy you the likelihood of us, any of us going to Africa to go and see them in the wild is pretty few and far between. Not many of us are fortunate to do that. I know I haven't and I don't know if I ever will be able to. It's an expensive trip. Um, but I can see him here and, uh, and have a connection with him and go, what can I do to make sure that these guys, his, his families in the wild can be safe and still exist? and um, whether it's recycling our cell phones or maybe not buying cell phones as frequently if needed and uh, because uh, coltan mining is something that greatly affects gorillas in the wild and so accredited zoos really don't take animals from the wild unless they are abandoned and deemed unreleasable they do the species survival plan where they're matchmaking of, of animals 
within zoos. They get transferred to different zoos to breed, and then those animals can then be on it. So these animals are born in captivity, and, uh, and so we do everything to make sure that they live a long and happy and healthy life. So you often hear us say, in the wild, their, their life expectancy is X, Y, and Z, and then in captivity it's longer. Well, they have veterinary care. That is something that uh, animals in the wild don't have. So that is a main thing there. They've got great food and, uh, and level of care that in the wild they'd be hunting for their food and it's very stressful and they'd be dealing with territory wars and that kind of thing. And humans. Humans are not great to these guys in the wild. So I hope that you have a connection with one of the animals on our visit, on your visit to feel that connection and want to do something in your own life that can affect these animals for the positive in the wild. Right, buddy? So another thing that I think of when I come to the zoo and when I'm here is I see I see these animals a lot because I'm out and about and checking it out. Sometimes I see them playing, sometimes I see them sleeping. Uh, when I was talking to one of our senior keepers when I first started, uh, there was an animal that was like, oh, you know, it seems kind of like bored or whatever. And she's like, well, here's the thing. Just like five minutes ago, they were playing in their exhibit, what you would interpret as playing and having a blast and um but then you came through 10 minutes later or five minutes later and they were sleeping or they're just laying there looking up you know hanging out just like the boys were when we went through on the indoor exhibit every experience you have at the zoo is different and uh, every interaction you might have is different the person who came 10 minutes later than you might have a different experience so it's something to think about uh, when you're out and about. It's kind of like walking by your neighbor's house, seeing them watch Netflix and then just making an assumption that their life, all they do is watch Netflix. Now, in quarantine, that is pretty accurate, but uh, it's definitely something to think about that uh, your experience may be a little different. But it also says, I do say, if you have any concerns about any of the animals, we have, uh, what we call a animal wellness and welfare committee and they take every comment very seriously and they they follow up with with comments that people make so if you ever have something if you see something that you're concerned about please reach out we do have our visitor services staff can take that information give it to our keepers in some cases we've had a visitor say hey i just saw uh, Marquisa has a cut on her on her elbow and they the keepers aren't out here all the time so they might not know so it's actually helpful to hear some of these things because you're also our eyes and ears because we want to make sure that these guys are happy and healthy and eating random grass or whatever they want to do so these animals here are called, are they called orangutans or are they called orangutans? So it's actually orangutans. We have been debating and trying to figure out why, but uh, mainly there's no G at the end. So it's orangutan and it has something to do with the, the actual meaning behind the name orangutan. But so that's another one you can, I almost got hit by a butterfly. <laughs> so that's another one that you can annoy your friends with. When they say, oh, did you see the orangutans on your trip to the Como? And you go, no, I saw orangutans though. Because people love to be corrected like that. Just do that all the time. So coming around the corner is uh, always a fun sight to see in the summertime. It's the flamingos. So they are out on exhibit ready to dazzle you with their beautiful coloring. They're all hanging out on this side right now. So flamingos get their color from what? Do you know? It's from their food source. So they get their pink coloring from from really the shrimp that they eat. So it helps them create that. So when they're born they're actually 
a light gray. And then as they eat, they start developing those colors. They're very pretty. There's different types of flamingos, but uh, I think these are one of the prettier species of flamingos. And it's not because I'm not a zookeeper and don't know the name of the other ones. <laughs> But our zookeeper could tell you that. <laughs> so, all right. So that kind of concludes this part. Now we're heading back into the visitor center. And as we go into the visitor center, you've got more choose your own adventure type style of your visit here. But we're going to head inside. We're back in the visitor center. From here, you've got options. You can use the restrooms, visit our awesome gift store. Otherwise, you can go into Tropical Encounters. That's another space that you may have been missing this time of year uh, without being open. But now that we're open, you get to check it out. So let's go take a look. So since we've been close to the public, there's a new addition to Tropical Encounters. In here, there's some red-footed tortoises. I believe there's about six of them in here, so we gotta keep an eye. Oh, there's one right here. Ooh, hi. One of my good friends, Cassandra, is gonna be super excited for this. She's a big turtle tortoise fan, as I know many of you are as well. All right, we're back in that choose your own adventure spot. Again, restrooms located here, gift stores open here, and then you have your option. You can head on out, go on with the rest of your day, or you could head into the conservatory and continue your day here at Como. You're, if you've been to the conservatory since we reopened, we were going the opposite way where we were having you enter through the Japanese garden. Well, now we have you enter through here and go the opposite direction. So you would go down this covered porch into our fern room, and then into our Palm Dome, the Sunken Garden, North Garden, the Ordway Gardens, and then finishing in the Japanese Garden. Today, I'm gonna go out this way because I've given you a tour of the conservatory and I'm sure, and people I don't even know actually liked it. So that was entertaining. And so I hope you enjoyed the zoo tour as well. We're excited to welcome you back. Yes, it looks different. Yes, we require face masks, I know. But uh, it's, uh, it's all in the right direction and uh, we hope to welcome you back soon. Make sure, as a reminder, make those reservations before you come and that'll make sure that you can get in. Don't come hoping just to show up because I'm guessing it's gonna be kind of busy when we first open. So make sure that you get those reservations. Again, they're free. Donations are always welcomed, but no matter what, if you can, donate or can't donate you are always welcome here at como that is part of our purpose and we love to have you here so thank you again for joining me for como live again the last time i said this was probably my one and only this is a, i'm assuming my last because i can't imagine what else they're gonna have me talk about i'm not a zookeeper i'm not a horticulturist i can make stuff up though so keep that in mind and throw out ideas if you want me to talk about anything else in the comments but in the meantime thanks so much thanks to legacy for supporting como live and keeping our mission of educating folks about plants and animals and how they impact us in the world thank you welcome back to como we're excited to have you back